I'm tuned into the French channel. Can my translator put his video on, please? Holy God. We look to you for everything. You are the source of our hope and our strength. And only in thee can we trust. And yet you, in your wisdom and your majesty, delegate your power throughout the universe. And in your communication to your beings on this planet, you have chosen to delegate your power through fallen human beings. I don't question your wisdom. I ask for a better understanding of your methods. Most importantly, because it involves Jesus, the Christ. We know that he is everything to us. And when we see him coming down to earth, in human form, we understand that this angel is your messenger. We are a prototype for all your messages. We are a prototype And as the disciples were willing to submit everything to your messenger, Jesus. Today, may the disciples of your kingdom also follow that same principle. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I want to welcome you to our last presentation. And in this final time together, I want to try to address some questions that have been asked of us. I think we lost the doctor manager. But this last presentation is a question and answer session. Question and answer. And as I said, um, Initially, I won't be able to answer all of the questions. But I'll do as many as I'm able to. Before I begin, I'd like to make an apology. It's not a good idea to mix business and pleasure. Friendship and our professional organizational interaction with one another. 
Which was a area on a movie show if you wonder among if you do those of you who know me well. Could you have a one? She will win. You know, I have a habit of teasing people. Now, what comes and work a collar in your one, particularly my friends. Oh, who was a Kesha and a good Tisha if you was a have a quote close working relationship with Shemaine. And during the presentation yesterday, I teased her publicly. Something that I do privately. It was wrong of me to do that in a public setting. So I want to publicly apologize to Shemaine and to all those who were listening. Moving on to the questions. We've received questions from six countries or six <laughs> geographical areas. I will try to put the questions on the Zoom forum so people can see so the translators can read them. <laughs> Question one. Have we reached a 50-50 balance of men and women in leadership roles yet? So the answer to that question is yes. And she was If you look at the the data, in fact, it's much more than 50-50. Currently, if you look at the top level of leadership in this movement, which is continental leader and up. As it stands today, we have one of our leaders on a sabbatical. We're nearly on 70%. 70% are women, 30 are men, approximately. When that continental leader comes back to work, it will, I think, be around 60-40. 60 men, 60 women, 40 men. When you look at leadership below the continental level, which means at the ministry level, I think we're at around the same percentages. So if we just summarize it in a very simple way, two-thirds of the Movement leadership are women and one third are men. So I don't think that's a surprise to people. Next question. Are we intending to ensure representation of LGBTQI plus people in leadership roles 
Kushe ture ture nekera na ture subiro kuata uh, utungulu shio kubika mwabantu wa pala LGBTQ. The simple answer would be yes. But there are difficulties to executing uh, or putting, to, or putting this thing into effect. When it comes to gender issues, we don't just put any men or any women into leadership positions. Even though we have a program of trying to facilitate a place for women in leadership, we have to choose women that are willing and able to do that work. The thing is we have a wide choice. Easily 50% of the movement is female. So the problem is we have not identified um, all of the LGBTQ community. Many are still nervous about coming out into the open. Often they're afraid of their own families, not of the members of the movement. And they would have to consider their willingness and their capability. But if we were to think about the numbers um, generally in a given population, we're never going to have that many people in leadership positions who are LGBTQ. But what I can tell you is that Elder Tess and myself, as much as we are in contact with LGBTQ members, we speak to them and we do listen to their concerns and needs. Some of these questions from different localities are going to be repeated. So, I apologize if I inadvertently repeat myself. Next question. Does the leadership try to improve the transparency to all parts of the movement, both big and small parts, so all members have a clear picture of what is happening internally? In the past, it happened sometimes that we were not aware of certain weekend meetings, or for a long time, we haven't even been informed about what ministry is responsible for our part of the world. And sometimes we hear things in presentations that we haven't been aware of. Mm. 
ba member la bonse ba 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 kwa tete kope cha kuelelika ukui shiba ifile jiti kama kati kuna mmoja kufiara iliyo eli pusho and there was a preamble to that question eli yokuli ko kwa liko na kaka kulondo la which I now give so that you have a little bit of context kaka kulondo la eli jeta bala ipusha kona la pera kule kama ishwe apa fumine lili pusho we are part of a worldwide movement but still a small movement people in our movement feel sometimes disconnected from it because they are all alone or only have a small group to interact with that was the preamble and then the question i asked uh, that was asked has already been read to you waliba ichipandwa cha movement yo yes so ndiyo nsero baba fia kabungwa kanono abantu ba movement bala yumfo nchita shimo kubaba tukakuliti pamula ndo wakabati bali febeka elio kari bumba kanono question of transparency is something that has been asked for many years now wakwete awa kulansha na wo ilili pusho lila wela wela lion sepanchi te itali niya kaya pita and i believe we're at a place today that is much better than it has been in the past significantly better lelo ofo ningalanda omoli aisa lelo yawa mishapo okuchira ifyo lisa kunuma this questioner uyoke pusha is part of a group or part of an area that has very few numbers ali kulu bali uko akweba ati kwa bempendo ya bantu abano so this person is i believe one that's feeling disconnected because they're part of a small group ancho yomuntu nde umfukutira di ali kulu bali ale umfwa okubulirwa bantu bali abano there's a question later on that I'm, I'm going to answer but I'll partially answer it now. Earlier this year, I did um I think two presentations on the organization of this movement. It was connected to a subject called middle management. Since that presentation was given to the present time okufuma apo yetsambiro cha pelero kufika ilero pano we have set up and we have refined um a couple of whatsapp forums twaliye twalibike fintu fimo mukubombera po pali chero na kupanga ma whatsapp and even before that um series of presentations the media broadcast was already up and running nangula tachira chitikejo media broadcast mulia yali kale kale ile bomba and the media broadcast um has expanded its remit slightly to be more than just a news outlet Elio imidia broadcast ya na ikula na ikushokira fie kutira yakula sabanganya feri ya shirieka We feel it is relevant and important Jonse to to amuno kutira to amfu kutira chiri chikankala ka vitire kwa Media broadcast is used as a communication tool Media broadcast ila bomfe shiwange shira ya kulansha nishamo Now coming back to those two groups that I mentioned those two WhatsApp groups Nombo kuwerera kuri ayo mabumba ya bili aya WhatsApp yo nandire po One of them is connected to the translation work uh, for these Zoom presentations Yimo ibume yo WhatsApp imo ya ampana fikuri ababa twala no kuirula So here speakers um in our studies often talk about putting something onto the, onto the zoom forum anshi abe ngiba mo abasangomu nyabo abarusha kuri zoom every ministry has representation on that forum as ministry yonse yali kwata aba bemani na ko muri yo so this the whole movement kanshi yali kata bonse abasangomu movement there's another forum that we have 
Ero kuliko na limbi ibumbele tuwa kwata? Where we communicate notifications of all meetings that Elder Tess and I are involved in. Umo tulansha nishisha ukulonga na konsefye uko ine na tesi tukwata. To the leaders of every ministry in the world. Sorry, there is a third law sacred. <laughs> which is a, a communication tool between Elder Tess and myself and all the continental leaders. So let me summarize all of them. We no longer have a situation where any ministry is not aware of an upcoming camp meeting. We no longer have a situation where a continental leader is not aware of an important issue that is confronting this movement. Ministry and continental leader, those leaders at those two levels continental and ministry. It is their responsibility to disseminate all information to its membership. Depending upon the locality, the continental leader may do it directly or do it through the relevant ministry. So when people speak about transparency, there is not any group in the movement that I am aware of that does not have representation. I said all of that sentence as double negative. Let me, let me rephrase it simply. Every group, however large they are, or however small, has access to all and every piece of information that another group has. The institutional setup is there. A particular member finds that they have not been informed of some inf some important information or some event. It's not a failure of the organization. The specific leadership that they have. And so, if you're experiencing this, you need to go to your relevant leaders and complain. And if you don't get your needs addressed, you can go to your continental leader, and if they don't address your needs, you can come to Elder Tesla myself. So I believe the movement, whilst not being perfect, is transparent. And the movement and every individual today has access to all the information that everyone else has. So, 
the questioner then says, A movement-wide <laughs> newsletter would be helpful, perhaps, to improve this, or a website with regular updates and information. What are your thoughts on this? Kutira, ukukwata kwa website ya hile ya konse, kutira kwa sana kuleka kwa wukua minisha muli fifile filikwa. Na angula website, hii nga fukula pere ili ya shire kwa ekwa. We don't see any value in having a newsletter or a website. Panshite tulipo, tatile chumono kutira chilichikankara sana ukukwata website na newsletter. When I say we don't see any value, it's not that there is no usefulness in having those tools. It's that those tools in our current organizational structure would not give any new or additional information than, than you're already receiving. So it's not that there's a problem that there wouldn't be any additional information that you, that you already don't have access to. If everybody was doing their job properly. Next question is about how to interact with Levites. Is there a playbook or would it be beneficial to have one for how to reach people with our message outside of the movement, starting with the Levites? A playbook that, for example, describes what subjects and in what order the message should be brought. So is there a playbook? No. Would it be beneficial to have one? It depends who you ask. So I'll give you my personal opinion on this. I don't believe that there is a one size that fits all. In the years that I have been teaching, which is quite significant, stretches over several decades, I have never found that a set playbook works. I think it's a bad form of evangelism. One-to-one -one evangelism, which is what Jesus did, requires only works it only works if you follow a certain principle which is meet the needs of the individual so if we're talking to a Levite and it's a teenager who is experimenting with drugs or it's an abused wife 
era de mbikutulera nda no mwana kashi yo wo bapuma ku mulume nangula umulume urenda mewa era de mbikulera nda kuri uyu homosexual or someone who's liberal or conservative nangula urenda nda kuri liberal na conservative they all have different needs they all have different concerns bonse bali kwatefia kabirefia kusana ere bali kwatefio baranguruka kwefia kusana so if there was a playbook ashinga kwa libu ku ili ankonga it would say listen to the person you're trying to help yeah ndo kutira kutika ku muntu uyo wo refwa yo kwafwa a friend of mine would call that winsome witnessing winsome is two words it means be warm and thoughtful and kind munandi kutaranda ati mulicho ube wa tikabirira eliyo wankumbu i've been a set list of study items to go through okubo kubika ifintu fimwe fya tanti kwesho umasa the need of the individual au mtuntu lusete kwate okufika po kwanisho kabira kwa bantu especially when it comes to the introductory dialogue that you have with them nakuba ile chaisa mukubalira po kulanshanya na bena mufye mukwete na when it comes to play books no manga chaisa kuri aya mabuku tutabotwa tukwete eri ashia which really means a set sequence of studies ichire pilulo kutira a If somebody refer to antico for ingiri okula konga. We already have one. Awe, to alikwata ko feum. It's called the baptismal. We we'll call that we we'll call it the baptismal guidelines. Alikwata ko feka mo to aketo kutira a akata ko ko akaru wetisho eh to aitati mirapo. And the reason why that playbook is useful nomulandu kali akatabo kena kabera akakankala first of all it's comprehensive icha kubalira po kali ilonga mwefingi and it goes through things in a fairly good order alilonge fintu fingi fya ba mumkonke isuma and it describes kabiri kalalondolola and it describes a comprehensive statement of our beliefs kalalondola ah imisela ya ya supaulo ya tsumino jesu so the community vows perhaps we should call it a statement of our beliefs and she the twitter no kwi that me la koto and that amashwa ya land wa pa tsumino jesu and we would expect everybody and anybody joining this movement to go through those baptismal classes abiri turesubira onse fie wa isa irunda kuri movement ukupita muno kusambirira muri fie fisambiriro now i'm not saying that those ba- um that those statements of belief those vows um are not subject to change they are eh nshirewo nshire soso kutira fie ya ifia landwa muri kataka tabo fie fia ta fili finga chinja na ngukwalula mo we almost certainly need to modify or adjust some of them and add some eh ningire oku ukwalula mono kunona mosimo ero no 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 kuinja no kubika mosimo ero kusana ko kulifyo they give a good structure a good good guidance to our teachers in how to deliver the message to members kila pera intanti kwe suma ifya kofo kafundisha wa movement wese enga pera fisambiro kuri ba whether they be fights or gentiles java mu levi na ngula umu gentile the rules for membership are the same we don't have a two tier system anshi nshira ya kuingirira po movement ya ba fei moyi ne tatwa kwa ta ko fibiri fya i think it's a misreading of inspiration to suggest that in the new testament there was a two tier system in the church of ephesus 
Anshukupu sana kwa kuruba na kwa kulombela na kuberenge la mo kwa kulanda ati mchipingo mchipanga na chupia mwari nshira shibilisha kuingiri la mo. Now I want to take this opportunity to speak to all of our baptismal teachers. Anshina labule inshita na ishukwe ili ukula nda kuliwa kafundi shaba funda imila pweshi. We know, you should know, the strengths and weaknesses of the statements of belief, those individual vows, how they're written and what they say. And you should know where something is law and where something is good advice. When you teach one of your students, you have to be attentive to, I'm just going to say, three things. We'll say four things, but there are more. Some of the language of those statements is out of date. We currently don't have a vow that deals with the issue of equality or sexism. Some vows are law and some are good advice. So that's my answer to this subject about how to deal with Levites. Introductory discussions should meet the individual needs of the person. Can't be a playbook. But once they decide to join the movement, then there are already set procedures, um, a playbook, if you like, that guides how we should dialogue with them. Next question. Following the presentation on organization at the international level, I would like to know what is the situation at the moment? Because since the split in 2019, there are ministries that we don't hear about anymore. So what is the new mapping of the movement internationally? Because I didn't have the opportunity to go back to the questioner and ask for some more details. So I'm not fully sure what's behind the question. Since the spill in 2019, the questioner says that there are ministries that the person no longer hears about. So I'm not sure what the person is referring to or who they're referring to. The, the person, the questioner, speaks about a reference point, which was the presentation of organization that I did, I believe, at the beginning of this year. Since 
I did that presentation, there has been no new mapping, as the question puts it, of the movement internationally. Nothing has changed. Elio, kulinga no kulando kufuma pari opo na fundire fieta kwa munika po kulanga mapu ya movement isonderi onzi. I think it's fair to say that there may have been some slight refinement, but even since 2019, there's been no real substantial remapping or change in the movement. Kanshi, kutikuwa wako kwa luka no kuchinja kwa kunono le lo kufuma 2019 kufikele lo kwena Nothing has changed in the movement over the last 12 months, organizationally. Now, some groups, some ministries have split, many members have left. Some ministries But separate to those issues, there have been no changes. If you have a specific question on that, I have to urge you to go back to your ministry leaders or your continental leaders that should be able to answer those questions relatively easily. Next question. Are there any new perspectives or new views on baptisms? Simple answer is no. We have no new views on baptisms. Now, again, I'm not sure why this person is asking this particular question. But because of lockdown, we all know that both baptisms and the communion service have essentially stopped. But already, in certain areas, where local leadership feel that it is safe, baptisms and communion services are beginning to restart. So, so two areas that come to mind immediately. Is that we've had baptisms in Australia and we've had baptisms in the UK in the recent past. And also in the only areas, but they're two that come to my mind immediately. And as soon as travel restrictions begin to lift and our elders are allowed to travel again, the baptisms as normal will pick up again. Next question. Should people who have not gone through baptismal classes be allowed to call the Levites? This is both a simple and a difficult question. The simple answer is, we don't restrict anybody from doing anything. We can't. We don't 
and we're not able to we don't and we're not able to monitor what people do and if god or providence puts you in a certain place at a certain time with a certain person place time and person then you have to move forward so, so it's not place to restrict people. You should know that some of our baptismal teachers are not yet baptized. So, technically speaking, baptism is not a prerequisite for doing evangelism. That's the easy answer. The more complex answer is that in a certain area, in a certain situation, we would not want certain people to represent us. The reason why those people have not gone through baptismal classes, have not been baptized, is because we have a problem with them. They're independent atoms. We would not want them um, calling the Levites into this message. But the question I ask about being allowed. The problem with that is those types of people do what they want without asking permission. 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 Without asking answer. Next question. Will priests that aren't already ordained go through any type of ordination ceremony in the future? Yes, they will. We currently only consider or only are considering baptizing elders. So if someone is eligible to be an elder or we need one in a particular locality, then the elder would be ordained. Next question. This is in three parts. Every organization has a name. What's the name of this movement? Organization movement. This question has come up for many years. We do not have a name. Should we have a name? Should we give, be given our own name or will someone give us a name? We have grappled with this question for a long time. I'll give you two examples of churches. Or as this person says, organizations. Take the Church of Ellen White. 
then they gave themselves a name, Seventh-day Adventists. So you might argue that we have a precedence there that we should be naming ourselves. Now, if you look at the New Testament model, they were just as organized as the Seventh day Adventist Church. It's very structured. They had a council, they had representation. They had all the infrastructure that we had. As far as I'm aware, they did not have a name. So maybe that would be the precedence that we don't name ourselves. So at the moment, we don't have a position on this. Should we not follow the line of failure or the line of success? If you look at modern Israel and ancient Israel, then the argument would be that we would have a name. Next question. Oh. I'm sorry, I don't remember what I said. Next question. Are we Seventh-day Adventists or are we just Sabbatarians? So I'm just going to use in a very simple way Daniel 2. In our generation at the end of the world, the mountain was the Seventh day Adventist Church. And the stone is cut out of that mountain. It has all the same nature, all the same properties as the original stone. I've discussed this at length in studies that deal with Caesarea Philippi. Where Jesus speaks about himself being the rock and Peter being the stone. It's the same analogy. We are Seventh day Adventists. We're not just Sabbatarians. Are we connected to the conference structure? No. Will we ever be? No. Do those who are part of that fallen structure need to come out? Yes, they do. It's the same dynamic as the church in the time of Christ. Question three. Where is our headquarters located? I think it's a rhetorical question because the question knows we don't have headquarters. The two leaders of this movement live on opposite sides of the planet. And you'd certainly think that if we we're going to have a headquarters, they should both go to work at the same place, which means they need to be co-located. 
kulingire kwa wetu sampo kwa kwa kutila shonsa shi ntungu shire ya mkuu wambira mupa ya panchita imu shinge shawa kunchende imu all of this leads you to understand hopefully that this worldwide movement is one of the plans and models of human thought or human ingenuity. We take one step at a time as providence directs. The headquarters of an organization uh, is normally associated with the head of the organization. That's where they go to work. So you can see how this idea of having a headquarters somewhere on this planet just would not work, does not work. Next question. So this one I'm not going to post. I'm going to read out because there's too much details to give the questioner away. This person works in an organization, a company. And the company has a great demand for higher level managers. Senior staff. But to become a senior member in that company requires a, um, a higher degree. A master's, if we're all familiar with that concept. Which is the postgraduate qualification. Now, I'm going to give some information away. In many African countries, unlike many countries in the West, Education is a six-day event. So you're required to attend your course on the Sabbath. A problem that many in Africa face. It does happen in the West, but it's far less frequent. So, the question is obvious. The person wants promotion. The company wants its staff members better educated so they can be promoted. The person will be required to have further education in order to apply for a higher position. The master's degree requires that they attend lectures on Sabbath. The question is, is it okay to study on Sabbath? Now, if I slightly adjust this scenario, and I say, if the company 
if the government via the company by the government either way if the government instruct the company that the company needs to operate on sabbath by law So all employees are now forced to work on Sabbath. What would the questioner do then? They force you to work on Sabbath. I'm sure that a Seventh-day Adventist, the person would say, I have to honor God, not the company, not the government. Remember the baptismal vows. Some are good advice and some are law. This is one that is law. The Sabbath, it's the fourth commandment, is law. What I don't understand, and I'm not criticizing this one person, this seems to be this thinking in the movement today. That we have suddenly become liberal. And we haven't. No, but the church took a point. The Sabbath is as sacred today as it was yesterday, as it was 2,000 years ago. As it was a creation. As it was a creation. If a person wants to break Sabbath, they're free to do what they want. But how can it be okay to voluntarily do secular business, secular education on the Sabbath? Breaking the Sabbath. Now, if you want to break the Sabbath because of money, we will call it filthy lucre. It's a King James term out of the Bible. Bad money. Evil money. <laughs> You're free to do that. But I don't believe God gives permission to do that, and so neither can I. Um, I'm just thinking what it's like. So I was quoting from First Timothy chapter three, verse three. chapter three, That's where the fir first Timothy three three is where the term filthy lucre is found. But it's just bad money. Okay, next question. Next question. This one is also from Africa. You'll see that by the nature of the question. <laughs> this is dealing with dowry. A person married before the subject of dowry became a test issue in our movement. They agreed to pay dowry before they joined the movement. And they've got some remaining dowry left to pay. 
Eh, you are the Shimo, Shishapwa, Kuripira. The balance. Eh, balance, Titika. What should they do? So we have already addressed this question. And we have said that in such a situation, things need to be considered case by case. So I would suggest that this person go to the continental leader Lay out the details of this situation to them and get their advice and counsel. The continental leaders are fully equipped and capable to answer that question. Which is not new, it's something that we've dealt with already. It's on a case-by-case -case basis. So another dowry issue. The person understands the issue of dowry, but the person's family who are not in the movement don't understand it and don't accept it. Now, this shows the sexism in the thinking of the questioner. The person is the firstborn. Now we know what firstborn all mean. We all know what that means. It doesn't mean the firstborn child. It doesn't mean that. It means the firstborn son. A child and a son are not the same thing. A son is gendered, a child is ungendered. I suspect in this case, it is the firstborn child who happens to be a man. But this idea comes from the Old Testament and all the girls are excluded. It's only the firstborn boy that is of interest. All the girls are irrelevant. It's the firstborn son that is counted. So this eldest son is the one that's always consulted when the other siblings are about to be married. Part of the privilege or the curse of being the firstborn son, not the firstborn daughter, is that they're not only required to give advice and counsel on this marriage of their sibling, they're not required to attend the function. They're required to contribute to the bride price, which in English means dowry. And as you would guess it, this person has got siblings, brothers, because it's only dealing with the brothers, because they're the only ones that have to pay dowry. And still has brothers who are unmarried. What is the person supposed to do? My father trusts me a lot. 
and cannot do anything without me. The simple answer is choose whether you will serve a man made structure or whether you will serve God. Who do you put first? When your family, your bloodline, want to call upon you and prioritize and prioritize you. Or your spiritual family says you need to go another way. When your blood family says you owe us, because we share the same, because we share the same blood, the answer has already been given in inspiration. Jesus says, These are my brothers, these are my sisters, these are my mothers. You folk, my blood family, my parents and my siblings, are not my family. My allegiance to you is secondary. Is it better to serve God or to serve humans? Many people have been thrown out of their families, cast off. If this was a story from Saudi Arabia, and we were to say, who are the good people and who are the bad ones? We would say, amen, we would be clapping for those converts. Who escape the clutches of their families. Who walked away from their traditions. This is the same issue. It's painful. It's difficult. But it's necessary to follow God rather than your parents. And does it come with a price? A price that is too high for many people to be willing to pay it. I hope each of you can join me in praying for this questioner that this man would have the strength to follow principle rather than policy. The person has the same situation that they need to be involved in his sister's weddings. Again, the details of what involvement he can or cannot have has to be worked out on a case-by-case -case basis. And I would urge this questioner to consult with the continental leader to get a specific answer to their specific issue situation. We had a technical problem in our presentation. 
And we lost some time. So I need someone to give me a time stamp where I need to finish. You can just put that onto the Zoom forum, what time I need to finish. Next question. Why shouldn't we observe the Sabbath from Saturday 12 a.m. to Saturday 11.59 p.m., which basically is midnight to midnight, instead of using the old system of sunset to sunset? Because we follow the principles that are given in inspiration. We follow the example of Jesus. And we trust in the prophet Alan White. So whether you go to Moses, whether you go to Jesus or Alan White, you get the same answer. Sunset to sunset. Not midnight to midnight. And the person calls it the old system. I call it the true system. So, another question down there. How are we going to deal with the dairy system, particularly in our country? Give the rest of the question. Dowry is one of the major cultures in the country that you can't avoid easily. How are we going to deal with the challenges when we decide not to pay? If the parents of the bride insist for the dowry, what are you going to do? simple answer to this is one I've given many times before, publicly and privately. If you live in a place where you put yourself into physical danger, if you're not going to pay dowry, then do what's counseled in Matthew 19. Choose to be celibate for the kingdom of heaven's sake. It seems to me that there are some people in our movement that have a fixation about getting married. If you want to put your desires for marriage above the principles and guidelines that God is leading this movement in, but don't expect the leaders of this movement to accept your decision. Either don't marry, or if you can't contain yourself, 
expect pain and manage it. Eh, enekera ukaripua ero no kuata ukusungirira. I don't intend to be rude, but I think this question demands a blunt and direct response. You can't get out of a dowry, just don't marry. Marriage is not essential. Honoring God is. There are plenty of this issue is not just one of human passion or human drive. It's a cultural issue. There are who choose not to marry. And it's not just a personal decision. It's a decision that is shaped and molded by the society or the culture in which they live. And certain cultures, it's acceptable now to marry at a later age and not an early age, as an example. Do we, or does the movement have an, have an organized workshop for Bible workers across the globe? And if we don't, which the questioner knows we don't, don't know why they ask it that way, why don't we? We share movement. They are quite a poor, Okubomba, and Usambisha, Okwa, Pekanishi, Wakwa, Baka, the questioner knows we don't. Gachakuti, the Fetakwa, Mulan, Lewis. The question is, why don't we? So the answer to this isn't as straightforward as people may think. Because the question that I would want to ask is who would run the workshop? And how could we have a workshop where all the Bible workers come together because we cover so many time zones. So there are logistical problems with having a singular workshop. Who would be the teacher and the timing of it? There is no philosophical reason why we don't or we shouldn't have some kind of workshop. Our problem is that we have to locate a suitable teacher to run those classes. We have problems with the timing. And we just don't have we haven't had the, the time to give it enough thought to actually come up with something that we would be happy with. It's a bad idea. But let me put it this way. I think it's better to do nothing than to do something badly. 
Chawa mapo okukana chite chintu na nguchimo ukuchila kuchitia ichimpicha vipisha. Next question, which is to do with baptisms. Iri pusho iri akonka po iri evoloresha kum lubatisho. Why can't the movement leadership delegate temporary authority to someone, especially when there is a demand for baptisms or the ordinance of communion? Delegating power to people like the president of the ministry or the Bible workers in the ministry for the person to perform the ordinance when there is no elder to perform that. Muna ndunishu movement, utu ngurishu wa movement, tawunga perera nukulang, nukupera bantu wa makayamu haya kutira babomba, ukubatisha, ukwa uyumulimo. Kuleka la icha palanga kateka wa ministry yo, na ngula kasambirisha wa jipingo muli yo ministry, ukubombo uyumulimo yo yo datapari. Like the rest of the world, we have looked at the lockdown due to COVID-19. Expected it to be sorted out to be lifted a long time ago. Like the world, we see that we're coming to a time, to a place where the lockdown is now being relaxed. Baptisms are already beginning to take place and we see things improving rapidly. So we don't see the need or the necessity of Temporary delegation. Nobody is <laughs> People who are ready for baptism who are not able to be baptized. Are not in danger of losing their salvation. There were several questions on money. All of the questions on money came from one geographical area. I won't tell you what that area you're in. I don't have time to answer all the questions. I only get one. Do we have a central movement bank account? where funds go and then and then are distributed as needed. If not, why not? As our funds are needed further than those we know. Oh, I have, oh, I have not posted it. Oh, yeah. sorry, I didn't press the button. It's on the Zoom phone. So this is another rhetorical question. I don't know why I get so many rhetorical questions. The person knows we don't have a central movement bank account because if we did, everyone would know about it. Because if we had a secret one, there wouldn't be any use of having it because that would be putting their money into it. So we don't have one. 
This is not an easy thing to answer. There are two problems, at least. The last time we had a central bank account, the people who had control of the money ran away with the money. And that money was not registered in the names of individuals. It was registered in the name of a proper registered charity or ministry. And they still took the money. We have a model today of decentralization, not centralization. Because it's safer that way, and that's our current thinking. Secondly, if we had a bank account in one geographical area, we'd have to choose what that area was. And the problem is, most countries that allow you to set up such an account limit the way that you're able to use that account. It difficult to send money internationally. Because of the laundering rules that there are because of, the money, because of the money laundering rules that are in existence so there are two simple answers the last time we had a central bank account money was stolen and that setup was not in the names of individuals, it was in the name of a ministry, and there was still no protection. And secondly, the way these types of bank accounts are set up, these, charity, these charitable bank accounts, they make international money transfers difficult and expensive. So what looks good on the surface in reality, is not such a good idea. I don't have time to answer any other questions.
Hello? Sorry, your connection was about please alert. Is it okay now? Yes. So, I want to repeat what I said. Now, that way, shall put an agenda. I can't get anybody translating me. So, my connection is not stable. Did I unfold you and say, Poland, or I'm sure Okay, I said that was the last question I could answer. And people have said that they didn't understand what I have said. Our concern about having a central bank account. Is that the dangers and the risks outweigh the benefit? It's not that we're trying to hide things or be secretive. It's that we don't currently believe that a centralized model is workable or is good for this movement. That may change in the future. But for the present, we intend to continue to allow local ministries to handle their own money and to disperse that money according to their own needs. There were several other questions that I don't have time to address. I want to apologize for the technical problems we've had today. It's as off putting to me as it is to you. Let's close the break. <laughs> Holy God, we thank you. Often we think we are in control of our own destiny. We think that the plans and ideas that we have are our own. That you have a mystical way of combining the human and the divine. None of us know how you do this. Your will becomes human and our will becomes divine. The combination of the two always results in your will being done. If it not in the way that we would not imagine it to be done. Despite our failures, we thank you that you are in control. As we approach the end of this year, we anticipate so many new thoughts, new ideas, new events. Please help each of us to understand you, to understand our relationship with one another. And like our forefathers, our foremothers, 
That we would put the kingdom of heaven before our own interests. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Au revoir to everybody and thank you.